The idea of a Terran power is that instead of burning the part of uranium, the 1%, which is the U-235, we decided, well, let's burn the 99%, the U-238. It is kind of a crazy idea. In fact, people had talked about it for a long time, but they could never simulate properly whether it would work or not. And so it's through the advent of modern supercomputers that now you can simulate and see that, yes, with the right materials approach, uh, this uh, looks like it would work. And because you're burning that 99%, uh, you have a uh, greatly improved cost uh, profile. You actually burn up the waste. And you can actually use as fuel all the leftover waste from today's reactors. And so instead of worrying about them, you just take that. It's a great thing. It breeds this uranium as it goes along. So it's kind of like a candle. You can see it's, it's a log there, often referred to as a traveling wave reactor. In terms of fuel, uh, this really solves the problem. I've got a picture here of a place in Kentucky. This is the leftover, the 99% where they've taken out the part they burn now. So it's called depleted uranium. That would power the US for hundreds of years. And simply by filtering seawater in an inexpensive process, you'd have enough fuel for the entire lifetime of the rest of the planet. So, you know, it's got lots, lots of challenges ahead, but it is an example of the many hundreds and hundreds of ideas that we need to move forward. Um, just to understand more about, about uh, Terra Power, right? Um, I mean, first of all, what, what, can you give a sense of what sort of scale of investment this is? Well, to, to actually do this software, buy the supercomputer, hire all the great scientists, which we've done, that's only tens of millions. And even once we test our materials out uh, in a Russian reactor to make sure that our materials work properly, then you'll only be up in hundreds of millions. The tough thing is building the pilot reactor, uh, finding the several billion, uh, finding the, the regulator, the location that will actually build the first one of these. Once you get the first one built, if it works as advertised, then it's just clear as day because the economics, the energy density are so different than nuclear as we know it. And so to understand it right, this involves building deep into the ground, almost like, like a vertical kind of column of nuclear fuel of this sort of spent uranium. And then, and, then, and then the process starts at the top and kind of works down? That's right. Today, you're always refueling the reactor. So you have lots of people and lots of controls that can go wrong. That thing where you're opening it up and moving things in and out, that's, that's not good. So if you have very, <laughs> very cheap fuel, then you can put 60 years in, just think of it as a log, put it down and not have those same complexities. And it just sits there and burns for the 60 years, uh, and, and then it's done. It's a, it's a nuclear power plant that is its own waste disposal solution. Yeah, well, what happens with the waste? You can, you can let it sit there. Uh, there's a lot less waste under this approach. Uh, then you can actually take that and put it into another one and burn that. And, and we start out actually by taking the waste that exists today that's sitting in these cooling pools or dry casking by reactors. That's our fuel to begin with. So the thing that's been a problem from those reactors is actually what gets fed into ours, and you're reducing the volume of the waste quite dramatically as you're going through this process. I mean, you're talking to different people around the world about the possibilities here. Where, where is their most interest in actually doing something with this? Well, we haven't uh, picked a particular place, but, uh, and there's all these uh, interesting disclosure rules uh, about anything that's called nuclear. Uh, so we, we, we've got a lot of interest. Uh, the people from the company have been in Russia, India, China, I've been back seeing the Secretary of Energy here talking about how this uh, fits into the, the energy agenda. So I'm optimistic. Uh, you know, the French and Japanese have done some work. This is a, a variant on something that has been done. It's an important advance, but it's like a fast reactor, and a lot of com countries have built them. So anybody who's done a fast reactor is a candidate to, to be where the first one gets built. So in, in your mind, um, time scale and likelihood, of actually taking something like this live? Well, we need, for one of these high-scale electric, electrical generation things that's very cheap, we have 20 years to invent and then 20 years to deploy. That's sort of the deadline that the environment models, environmental models have, have, have shown us that we have to meet. And, you know, TerraPower, if things go well, uh, which is wishing for a lot, could easily meet that. 
And there are, uh, fortunately now, dozens of companies, we need it to be hundreds, who likewise, if their science goes well, if the funding for their plant, pilot plants goes well, that they, they can compete for this. And it's best if multiple succeed, because then you can use a mix, a mix of these things. We certainly need one to succeed. I mean, in terms of big scale possible game changes, this is the biggest that you're aware of out there? An energy breakthrough is the, the most important thing. It would have been even without the environmental constraint, but the environmental constraint just makes that so much, uh, so much greater. In the nuclear space, there are other innovators. Uh, you know, we don't know their work as well as we know this one, but the modular people, uh, that's a different approach. There's a liquid type reactor, which seems a little hard, but maybe they say that about us. Uh, and so there, there are different ones, but the, the beauty of this is a molecule of uranium has a million times as much energy as a molecule of, say, coal. And so if you can deal with the negatives, which are essentially the radiation, the footprint and cost, the potential in terms of effect on land and various things is in almost in a class of its own.